Good morning, folks. Before we get started today, yesterday we went over all the changes ongoing in the solar system. It was not the day to miss the news. Most planets are changing even faster than the Earth is, and all those changes are either directly or indirectly related to the magnetic field changes of the planet. These were to be added to the body of evidence that we're starting the long cycle shift now. Let's go to the sun and peek in on the progress of the plasma filament incoming on the south. It is lifting slightly into the corona where it will be vulnerable to getting torn apart piece by piece by upper coronal processes. Over at spaceweathernews.com, we'll take a look at the last 24 hours on our star and they were pretty quiet. The incoming coronal holes dominate the focus today. They will set the next seismic watch for increased magnitude tomorrow and then deliver enhanced solar wind streams to Earth this weekend or early next week. Solar wind at Earth right now is calm. Let's go to our aesthetic piece and see a visualization of the Apollo walk from the landing zone up to the crater. It was along this path that some of the evidence we went over in the disaster series was found. Let's move on quickly to fast radio bursts, FRBs. These extreme signals from supposedly deep space are the new flavor of the decade in astronomy, but many mysteries remain. Today, we learned about a process used to locate non-repeating FRBs by coordinating detection and global telescope efforts. Keck taking prestigious honors for their role in carrying out the first implementation of this plan and locating a non-repeater. We are moving on to the climate, and we're back at Dr. Spencer's blog. By the way, he and a couple other former NASA scientists really have the only blogs on climate change worth reading. He has re-examined his 2010 analysis of spurious warming found even more problems. The numbers used to push climate agendas are not only off, but they are egregiously off and in obvious ways that have been identified before and ignored. Instead, we've got grant hunters on the prowl in utter servitude to pandering political, claiming we need to cut 80% more emissions than we thought. It's a titanic number, and it would be to industry and the economy like cutting off your left foot before a 100-meter dash. Another top journal allowing basement-rate climatologists to use CMIP5 instead of CMIP6, which should get you banned from receiving a grant these days if science worked properly. But beyond that, those estimates of warming are based on the RCPs. These have been the subject of paleoclimate comparison failures, CO2 oversensitivity and bias, and overblown warming predictions. Of course, what even the latest models are fully missing is the particle effects of the solar wind and cosmic rays and the coupling of the interplanetary magnetic field. Here, a specific look at the Arctic brings us back to the dozens of papers showing how aerosols cool more than the climatologists realize, how they require an electromagnetic analysis in addition to the kinetic and chemical one, and whenever the particle forcing of the sun and space are involved, we're looking at the microphysics level of the clouds and climate effect. A beautiful nod there to how small irradiance changes in climate models really should include the massive particle forcing swings on top of them, especially at the polar region. Now, speaking of that amplification of solar irradiance change, that's the focus here. When the sun drops down, it's not just a little less light, but 100 to 10,000 times lower particle heating and an increase in cloud cooling. That part is driven by an increase in cosmic ray cloud production, and unlike previous studies, they are now not assuming those clouds trap heat. They're now properly suggesting it's those clouds reflecting sunlight that trigger the rapid glaciations, and no solar terrestrial physicist misses how worked that situation is by energy from space. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, a UPS truck blocked my entire neighborhood for 25 minutes yesterday while unloading our new books to us. The pre-order wait is over. They will be available for purchase again, including a PDF version, after we get the pre-orders out to all you gloriously patient people. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. It's 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.